This is 5 grams of glucose. It is the amount of glucose circulating in your blood if you are a healthy person. If it was just 7 grams instead of 5, then you'd be considered diabetic. It is estimated that 77 million Indians are diabetic and a far greater number are likely pre-diabetic. To understand how your body goes from 5 grams normal to 7 grams diabetic, you need to understand the biology of metabolism. Metabolism is the swiggy zomato of our body. It is the process by which we take in nutrients, break them down and transport them for use in various parts of our body. In this video, we will explore the metabolism of carbohydrates because that makes up most of an average Indian diet. And understanding what happens after you eat a chapati, a cup of rice, or a biscuit is very useful. If you don't understand the basic science of metabolism, it puts you at risk of falling for complete misinformation on the internet, particularly all the health influencers claiming to have cures for metabolic problems without any evidence and a very poor understanding of how the body works. So put on your seat belts. We are going to go for a ride with your food you eat down your digestive system. Carbohydrates are all ultimately broken down into glucose. Glucose is the simplest sugar and is the basic fuel for all life on the planet. If each cell in your body is a car, glucose is petrol. But think about our ancestors. There was no guarantee when they got food. It's not like today where we get food three times a day on time. Because of our hunter-gatherer past, our bodies have evolved an amazingly sophisticated mechanism to use and store energy for later use. Our ancestors went through what we now call the feasting and fasting cycle. They ate a lot when food was available and thus those who are able to store excess food as fat survived periods when food was not available, like winters. Now you can ask, why take all the trouble to convert sugars to fat for storage. Why not just keep it in the blood as glucose? I mean specifically since fat storage seems to be at the root of modern day problems. Turns out storing glucose as fat is more storage efficient. Your small intestine breaks down starches like in rice, wheat, millets and potatoes into glucose and your regular white sugar, jaggery and fruits into glucose and fructose. Both glucose and fructose take entirely different pathways in your body. We will focus on fructose in a separate video. The glucose that enters your blood from your small intestine is now sent all over the body like an ice cream wala traveling around the streets in your colony. Except one problem, the ice cream seller does not have the key to open the freezer compartment. That is where the hormone insulin comes in. Insulin unlocks the insulin receptor on cells in your muscles and that allows them to take in glucose. And if the cell does not immediately need all that glucose because, you know, you're just sitting and watching YouTube videos on your phone and not exercising, your cells will convert glucose into glycogen. Glycogen is like animal's version of starch glucose molecules tightly linked together so that it's more compact and easier to store. Your body can store approximately 300 to 400 grams of glycogen in your muscles and about 100 grams in your liver. So after you eat, all the glucose in your blood is sent to every part of your body and cells take it in and either use it right away or convert and store it as glycogen. Both glucose and glycogen give you 4 calories per gram. So you roughly have 1800 to 2000 calories available for any immediate use. 2000 calories is about 2 hours of vigorous physical activity. This is why if you do long distance running or biking, your body will run out of glycogen, which is why it's important to get some sugary drink to replenish your blood sugar. Our ancestors who probably did a lot more physical labor during the day also likely used up their glycogen stores before it was time to eat again. But what happens if you eat more than what your body can store as glycogen? It becomes fat. Because fat is even more of an efficient way 
to store energy because it gives you 9 calories per gram. So remember insulin, if you're not the kind that is using up glycogen in your muscles, insulin will simply get your glucose converted to fat. And this fat, before you get scared, is perfectly normal and nothing to be worried about. Animals like us evolved this mechanism to store energy from excess food during the time when food was available so that we could survive periods when food was not available. This fat is deposited under our skin. It's called subcutaneous fat. This is the fat you can feel by pinching your skin. Now, the thing is, these cells can store fat and expand in size, but only up to a point. If you're continuing to eat a lot more calories than you use daily and your glycogen store is full because you don't exercise your muscles and your fat cells are also at maximum capacity, that is when your body will start depositing fat in a lot of other areas. Your blood, organs like the liver and kidney, your pancreas and this is when there are problems. Fat is not supposed to collect around these organs and once it does, many problems emerge. For starters, fat being all over the place gets in the way of insulin unlocking cells ability to take in glucose so more of it becomes fat. So you eat food, it still doesn't seem to give you energy because a lot of it is becoming fat. So when someone is described as not very fit, they eat a lot of food but they're not able to do an equivalent amount of physical activity. This is what we call insulin resistance. And then the pancreas has to produce more and more insulin to try and get rid of the glucose in your blood and it gives up after a point and that is when you develop diabetes. And it gets worse from there on. Continued fat deposits inside your organs, blood vessels, etc. will increase the risk of heart disease as the heart has to work harder to pump blood through vessels blocked with fat. An interesting observation is that we often find very obese Americans who do not have diabetes, but very skinny looking South Asians, Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis that have diabetes. How does that happen? This is because of genetics. Remember, the amount of fat storage capacity under the skin, we tend to have a smaller storage capacity than Caucasian or white people. So a bad diet will give Indians diabetes sooner than it does Europeans. Again, you can understand this by considering evolution of humans in various climates. Those who evolved in colder climates genetically have a greater capacity to store fat safely. Whereas those that lived in tropical, food abundant places like India do not. There is also a darker, more disturbing reason. Our recent ancestors regularly went through horrible food shortages and famines due to exploitative British policy. And a child born to a mother who experienced food shortage in her life is likely to turn on genes that convert more of your food into fat. This is called epigenetics. This is what we call the South Asian skinny fat phenomenon, where people have no muscles but very large pot bellies. All right, so now you understand how your body does this delicate dance to digest food, convert it to glucose, ship it all over the body, and then use insulin to either get glucose into cells and convert it to glycogen or convert it to fat and deposit it under your skin. And if you continue to eat too much, this system breaks and fat spills over into your organs and makes insulin's life harder. Genetics, age, gender, gut health, stress and hormones also affect whether fat is deposited under your skin or inside your organs. But broadly and generally, if you continue to eat more than you need to, you are at higher risk. Now, the goal of this video is to give you the scientific basics of food, not medical advice. I am not a doctor. If you have any existing conditions, please talk to your doctor and do not take advice from social media. What simple things can you do in your lifestyle to prevent or delay these problems from happening? Now, please note this 
is a very simplified explanation. One, exercise and build muscle. Remember, more muscle means more glycogen storage and less of your glucose becomes fat. And less fat means insulin does its job really well. Two, eat a lot of vegetables and protein. As I explained in earlier videos, dietary fiber slows down the rate at which glucose is absorbed into the blood. So your body has more time to absorb it and convert it to glycogen instead of rapidly getting converted to fat. And if you exercise, protein will help you build muscles, which then store more glycogen, reducing insulin resistance. Three, focus on your overall diet instead of wasting your time on organic seed oils, palm oil, microwave, air fryer, fridge, superfoods, ash gourd, turmeric, ghee, and every other silly and trivial subject influencers like to waste your time on. A good diet is a balance of protein, fats, carbs, and fiber in addition to micronutrients. And eat less food than you think you need to. And spend time understanding how your body works. It will help you figure out what is information and what is misinformation.